Good morning, my name is Azul Sa. I'm your host for Family Matters, brought to you by Manor Park Solution, or MAPS. Uh, MAPS provides counseling services to individuals through our Healthy Relations Program, as well as providing transitional housing services through our Phoenix House Programs. With us uh, today is uh, Leo. We are continuing our discussion with Leo Moose about his residential school experience. Uh, we went through a number of discussions with Leo at our last show. Um, and we ended with, uh, with when we were talking to Leo about uh, when he went home after his three years at, at, at the school. Uh, so Leo, uh, thank you for for being here and sharing your experience. Uh, you had mentioned after the three years of being uh, at the school, and if you could, uh, for for the, our viewers who weren't with us at the last show, um, the residential school you you went to, could you re repeat the name of it? It's um, Guy Hill Residential School. And just outside the park, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, what is that building you use for now? Do you know? Uh, apparently, the building was condemned. There's nothing there anymore. It's just an open space. Just an open space. Yeah. And and I, f I forgot to ask you uh, when we were talking about that. How many kids were there when you, you were there at the time? Oh, there was, I wouldn't be able to give you a number. There yeah. were so many kids. Prob it would be in the hundreds, though, you yes. think? Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, you, you had mentioned after three years, they they said that you were allowed to, to go home. Yeah. Um, and you had said that it had to do with the fact that your your parents were 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 doing well. Making um, a good salary, yeah. Good salary, which which I find interesting because they then they never give the reason why they had you go there in the first place. <laughs> uh, so um, your parents, uh, you you said that you were raised by your grandparents. Um, what what role did your parents play when you when you left the school? My parents? Yeah. That, well, that even uh, even them, they were, all they thought that I'm getting, I'm going to a good school, yeah. I'm getting good treatment, I live in a place where I don't have to go very far to go to school, I'll be well fed, I'll be getting clean clothes, I'll be protected. I think that's the most uh, striking thing for for me, at least, uh, as we're having our discussion, is the is the thinking at that time uh, from from the parents um, in regards to where their kids were, were going to. So, so your your feelings that most parents felt and most grandparents felt that their kids were going to a place where they were going to get a good good education. Is that correct? No. Uh, I guess they have to bring my brainwash my parents before they could brainwash me. <laughs> How did you feel about about that? Um, that you you were sent to a place where uh, you saw a lot of bad things happening, uh, and the place you're sent to, uh, your your parents or your grandparents uh, felt what what was a good place. How? How did you feel about that? Was there any conflict in your mind about um, uh, disappointment? Um, right away. Yeah. I I didn't like the idea, no matter how good it sounded. Like where I was, I was doing good mm -hmm. with my grandparents in the school I was going to. We we talked about. Uh, the intergenerational impact of residential school, uh, how it impacted the relationship that parents had with their children, uh, where 
even though the children did not go to school, but if the parents did, uh, how it impacted how those parents related to their children. What's your thoughts on that? Do you think there was a real impact on how uh, individuals like yourself or people that, that you know of that went to residential school and the experiences you had to go through, do you feel that impacted how you related to your children? The one good thing about me is uh, when I said to myself when I was in there, if I ever get out of here, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help kids. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I did for my kids and my grandkids to this day was to protect them the best I could, not to show what was inflicted on me. How do you think your other classmates did, though, the ones that um, had an impact on their life from their experience? I've never... I've never really questioned my friends about uh, maybe uh, one of them will bring up a small topic when we were in uh, residence school, but uh, we generally don't spend enough time or get together to talk about things way back then. But there's uh, small things that pop up that we laugh about, remember this and that, you know. Some of the memories? Mm-hmm. Some good memories. <laughs> What's your feelings about, and we're, we're going to be talking about what you feel needs to be done to help survivors of residential school. But I hear at times how some people say, well, you know, it's something that happened a long time ago, and it's time to move on. What what would you say to individuals like that, that say that? That's totally not true. Mm-hmm. You don't just forget and move on. It's easy for some people to say that, but put it to work, buddy. Mm-hmm. It's a different story. And And if Speak to me as if you were talking to a person that would think that way. What would you tell them about what's the most difficult thing about trying to move on? Other, the people that knew this was happening and not saying and now that everything is coming out in the open, I, I think they're really thinking hard of a loophole where they can calm people down and say, hey, we'll try and make this better for you, but it doesn't work like that. No. No. Give somebody a piece of paper that's written, hey, 50,000 here is for your troubles. No doesn't work like that. You are watching uh, Manor Parts uh, Solution Show, Family Matters. We're talking to Leo Moose uh, about his experience in, in residential school. Um, and we're actually uh, now starting to talk about what we feel needs to be done. And Leo, you... Uh, you had talked about the whole idea of uh, payments being made, and that is is not enough. What do you feel needs to be done to even start the journey of healing for people who are survivors of residential school and their families? The thing is, it is it doesn't take one individual to hear from one individual. There's a majority of us out there that need to get together and, you know, 
speak out. And how would that help? How would that help? Yeah, how, how do you feel that would, would help? Well, that remains to be seen. We have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like I say, there's lots of us out there. If we were to get together and, you know, try and make some kind of approach, maybe we can get something done. From what I, I hear at times, uh, the first step, for the healing is to recognize that pain to begin with, um, to recognize the the pain that was caused. Uh, do you feel that our society has recognized the pain that was caused because of residential school, or do we still have a ways to go before we get there? I think... There's a long ways to go yet, buddy. Long ways. But that you feel would would be the first step is for people need to recognize fully. Exactly. Recognition. Yeah. Recognizing. You know, this this is not a simple problem that you can solve over like in one day. It's it's a long process. The, let's talk about the church for a bit. Now we we know that the government of Canada and their role. Um, what what do you want to hear from the church? What do you want to hear from um, save the Pope? Will will was to come and see you? <laughs> what would would you want to hear from him? That's a good question that I'd have so much to say that I wouldn't be able to get in one sentence. Would the first step be for him to provide a formal apology, saying that we were wrong and bad things occurred? For sure, no doubt. That's, that's the first step. Leo, do you find that there's any conflict uh, with some individuals the fact that the role that the church played uh, in the pain but yet the the church is supposed to be a place of healing and spiritual support what's your thoughts on that is there a uh, an internal conflict for some individuals trying to come to grips with with the role that the church played in this It's, I don't know how to put it, but the church playing a role in this uh, words alone can't express what I could say for the church or why. How, how has that affected your own spiritual relationship? When it My comes spiritual, it, uh, it really didn't, I've always, uh, kept my spiritual life with me. My grandfather taught me lots. My grandfather was an awesome man. He was my mentor. And uh, he read three syllabics from his Bible, and I understood him. How old were, were you when, when he p p passed away? When my grandpa passed away, I was 20 years old. Did he ever find out about some of the experiences that you had in the church? I wouldn't want to tell him. <laughs> no, no, you didn't want to tell him. No. Well, I guess some people, some people talked about it before, and uh, sure, it, it caught out to some people, but I didn't want to... I didn't want to tell them right away. So going back to the role of the church and the government and going on to the government of Canada, what what else w would you like to see from them? Say aside from a formal apology, 
aside from some compensation to help with providing resources for people to be able to to start to heal any other thing that you'd like to see from from the government yeah I would like the government to stop governing me I would like to govern myself and can you expand on that a bit <laughs> self-government self-government you know they um, I don't know how many years like world look but like uh, sometimes I feel like I'm from the third world country in my own country uh-huh. self governance has been talked about for such a long time um, and so many people have their own interpretations of what what that means what does it mean to you as an indigenous person well for one thing it it would make a major changes in uh in a lot of places and a lot of systems for the indigenous people it would change like child and family services even i think greatly we could abolish uh so called welfare we didn't i never knew welfare when i was growing up mm. it it just kind of made me small as i got older and to understand what welfare was it was like an insult And Leo, I, I know our time is uh, coming to, to an end, but I, I want your reflections on what's occurred over the last months or so with the finding of, 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 of unmarked graves of children. That's another, that's another part that uh, uh, I'm not saying that it hasn't affected me. Of course it does. that goes on with the ongoing healing that I do for myself myself uh-huh. and in closing what would you if you had a chance to speak to other survivors of residential school what are some of the things that you would advise them to do well i think we all we all need to get together as a group as a whole uh, survivors if you have people in numbers i think that's more uh, boisterous will be heard i'm not saying we haven't been heard but we want to be heard we don't just want to be swept off like that. Well, um, you have been listening to Leo Moose, uh, a s- uh, residential school survivor, on his reflections on his experience uh, at the school, but also his thoughts on what needs to be done going forward. Um, I want to thank Leo for the time he spent with us. I, Leo, I know it's a is a very um, uh, hurtful discussion to have, but as you said over and over again, it's one that, that needs to happen uh, because if you keep it buried, it's, uh, it's just going to cause more pain. So as, as MAPS, what we would encourage people to do uh, alongside what Leo had mentioned uh, is... Um, if you are experiencing uh, the need to to speak about your experience, we encourage you to go out there and and speak speak about it and and to and to uh, and to find those resources. Um, you know, uh, you can always phone the maps office at seven seven eight sixty forty. 
to help with uh, hearing about what are some of the re resources available. Uh, but Leo, thanks again for for time. You've been watching Family Matters, uh, brought to you by Manor Park Solutions. Thank you for your time, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Well, I'd like to say thank you for having me, and uh, Jessica, your dad is finishing up. Jeff, your dad is finishing up, and. Uh, I'll let your kids know when uh, they're going to broadcast this, and you're going to hear your pops. Have a great day. Okay.